molti di coloro che seguono questo programma sono appassionati. Many people who watch this program love sailing and either have a boat or are thinking of buying one. So, how do you like this one? It's the Cranky 54 Fly. Judging by the look of it, it's a grand boat, but then this one is one of the most important boat yards in Italy. As you know though, the aesthetic side of things isn't the most important. To judge properly, you need to see how it was built and sailing. A few weeks ago, we went to the boatyard and were very impressed with how efficient production levels were, from building methods to the high level of automated industry and the extraordinary attention put into every workstage, all with humidity and temperature control. Osservate la bellezza delle finestrature. Just look how beautiful these windows are. Important for the aesthetics, but also for making life a little more pleasant from inside the boat. You need to know that the boat is full of holes. As well as the windows, in fact, there are many other elements that have needed cuts and slashes. The most important are, obviously, those in the hull, for the propulsion and manoeuvring. In order to cut precisely to the millimetre, Cranky uses an automised machine, not human hand. If you were watching when we were in the boatyard, there was this room where a cutting robot did it all. Just think, in most boatyards this is a manual job. So how much more precise and immune to errors we are here with the automatic control system positioning the whole boat. These two cutters are making all the necessary holes on the boat. The ones to fix the sunshade, the air conditioning machine, even the extra accessories in the crew cabin all the holes. You know that you need to go to visit the boatyard before you buy a boat. OK, we need to try it out, one. And we don't want to annoy you with how it's built. But Cranky's ways of putting things together, installing and building are really to be admired. Let's go back a bit and see how they finished off the boat. The boat's finished and is ready to be sent off to wherever in the world. But before setting off, it all needs to be tested out in this pool. From what we've seen, it's been made impeccably, so now it's time to sail. Whilst we move down this canal that brings us out to the sea, let's have a look at what we've got on board. At the bow, a well-organised sun deck with headrests, sunshade, drinks holders and radio remote control. Even at the stern, you can sunbathe, or eat, or even watch TV. But the true tour de force of the outside is the fly. It's huge. The dashboard has all the commands, gizmos and instruments that you'll find in an interior driver's area. Because in certain countries of the world, they're always pilot from outside, whatever the conditions. The sun deck is extra large and the windbreak protects in such a way that it can even be used when sailing. 
The kitchen is fitted with everything a large dinner party needs for at least seven people. The tender is found in the garage, so the swim board, which submerges, can be used to lie on or for the jet ski. Underneath is very big, it seems to take up the whole main bridge, but really they've dedicated a lot of space to the kitchen too, with wall cupboards and towards the corridor. There's a lunch area under the shade, very good use of space. As this is a boat of certain importance, let's see how important they've made the master quarters. Pretty nice. The double is big, 2 metres by 160 centimetres. Then there's the walk-in wardrobe with shelves and drawers, an armchair, storage, the bathroom. There's even a seat in the shower. Then there's a double cabin, a cabin for the crew at the bow and another double. Very airy because it's more than two metres high and has two light sources up at the top. There's also a dressing corner and direct access to the day bathroom. We've come to the mouth of the canal. I can see the sea. We've waited enough. The engines are hot, so let's give it some throttle. The boat is pushed by a IPS2 propulsion system with D11 engines and varying calibrations from 600 to 725 horsepower. Immediately after starting to plane, the boat has a maximum angle of incidence of about 4.5 degrees at 16.5 knots, but the line on the horizon just stays perfect. At this speed on the boat, it's maxing output, but the different potential engines can give you merit for thinking about. With the more powerful engines, all cruising speeds are higher. For example, with 600 horsepower, you can get a maximum of between 17 and 27 knots, with pretty constant consumption of 6 litres per mile. With 725 horsepower engines though, ideal cruising speed is between 20 and 30 knots and consumption is slightly above a litre a mile. Maximum power is 725 horsepower, so there's nothing to do but lower the paddle and find that max speed. And I'll slowly adjust the intruders which have the same effect as the trim tabs or flaps, or however you want to call them, so I can find the ideal balance for the maximum speed and stretch the boat as best as possible on the water, with less resistance and go faster. Maximum speed is 36 knots, 36.5, one more knot than the boatyard actually claims. And just to round up, I can tell you that this is the same boat, the cranky 54 Fly, with two 600 horsepower engines and can get up to 33.5 knots. Well, as you choose the engine size, right now we're going to see how it rides, with a nice narrow turn at full speed. The skid is very noticeable, but the boat leans on the corner and is holding the turn very well. It's all very neat. How about if I do one on the opposite side?
It changes course straight away. I like it. I like how it turns. And the driver's seat is very comfy. Now it's time to go up against some waves in the worst way possible. On the bottom of the hull, not the bow. I'm probably prejudiced by what I saw in the boatyard, but I feel that it's really solid, which gives me a sense of security. In my hands, as for as long as it is, which is over 17 metres, including the flybridge, I know I can take it wherever I want to go. Well, I can tell you the truth now. If I had 830,000 euros plus VAT, I think I'd buy this cranky 54 fly. In San Giorgio di Nagaro in Friuli, between Trieste and Venice, you'll find the Italo Monzino Marine Test Center, where you can try out all the cranky boats, 365 days a year, including holidays.